Now let's get one top tier analyst to talk about this space. Ankur Rudra of JP Morgan is now joining us. Ankur, good morning. Great to have you with us here. Thanks very much for your time. Uh, so that simple question once again, uh, has uh, IT services, business momentum bottomed out and have stock prices bottomed out as well? Hey, morning. Thank you for having us. So, I th you know, we think that what's interesting is in the last two or three quarters, uh, I think what's accepted is that we've seen a significant amount of bottoming out, bottoming out of demand. So to that extent, I think revenue momentum appears to have bottomed out. But the challenge really is that when does this see an upturn? And we don't have visibility of that yet. So while we have seen an element of bottoming out on, on revenue, on demand, the, the visibility of recovery is, is not super clear. And we can, I think the, the confidence on, on bottoming out also is supported by some other factors. I think it's, it's broad, it appears to be relatively broad based. We've seen some uh, recent indicators like hiring indices uh, suggesting something similar. But I think the sort of the, the, the tougher question to ask is an answer is the, is, the, is the timing of the recovery from here on. Uh, so Ankur, when you speak to investors, domestic and foreign investors, uh, what are the top questions that they're asking and are they willing to put money in IT or are they going to wait for that recovery to take place before they commit capital? So, you know, what we have seen in the last uh, two to six months is, you know, the valuations are not very low, right? So valuations, uh, you know, I think you mentioned in your you know uh, segment just now, valuations are somewhat ahead of pre-pandemic levels. So there is some, uh, you know, investments already here uh, by, by investors. I think what investors are trying to understand is, I think, two or three things. One, what is the pace of the demand recovery? Is this a fiscal 25 story or is it more of a calendar 25 story? Number two, what can be the amplitude of that recovery? Can the recovery be anything comparable to the highs we saw during the pandemic in the 20 to 22 or 23 years? Uh, how does it compare with pre-pandemic levels of growth? Uh, third question is on, is there a meaningful potential improvement in in margins from a, from a range of these companies. So I think those are the sort of key questions people are trying to address and answer. I think the third question is, uh, you know, are, are this is the sector a potential winner on the AI side or is it a potential loser? I think those are the I think I would the, I would say big picture questions investors are trying to address as they think about increasing investments here. Mm. Uh, so since uh, you know we. When we make an investment, many of them do it over the longer term, right? So over a three-year time horizon, what will be the revenue EPS growth for the companies that you cover in the IT pack? I think if we break up the sector, the way we have done this, if we break it up into now two or three different parts, uh, let's look at the scale IT services companies to start with, where ability to grow very, very strongly, especially in double digits, appears to be relatively lower. We think the, the scale IT services companies, companies, let's say above a certain threshold, call it $5 billion or so, can probably grow in the medium, I would say the mid to high single digit sort of ballpark in that sort of range. Maybe they might see one or two years of slightly stronger growth. The second group I would say is the larger mid-sized companies uh, across IT services and, and engineering services. Engineering services as a subset, I think that's one subset which has seen lower penetration where growth can be meaningfully higher. We would expect growth there, which currently ranges between high single digits to let's say double digits, can be structurally at you know low to mid teens uh, for at least four or five years. So they can grow a bit faster. Now within the overall sector, there are clearly a few companies which we call growth heroes, which have been able to grow across cycles, which have been able to see through downturns where growth can be meaningfully higher. Growth can be in the sort of early teens on a sort of structural basis. So we break it into those three parts. Scale guys growing at high single, growth heroes growing at you know at low low teens, and uh, engineering companies can potentially grow at low to mid teens. Ankur, but where is the growth valuation trade off the best? I think the answer depends completely. This is very very bottom up, so difficult to answer it exactly here because we can't talk about specific stocks. But what we've seen is that you know if you compare growth versus valuation, I think there are different uh, support factors at different segments of the sector. So if you start with the uh, larger firms, right? If you start with the scale firms, one of the things which some of the scale firms have evolved to in the last five or six years is paying out regular amounts of dividend or buyback. So there is an element of support when you get to a certain amount of 
uh, dividend or total return yield around three to four percent, which supports uh, the valuation of those firms. So those, uh, you know, bottoming out of those yields make them look a bit more attractive. And uh, now this is not true for all the companies. If you look at some of the larger, com- some of the smaller companies growing a lot faster, uh, one of the frameworks we try to use is, you know, price earnings to growth. Price earnings to growth below two, uh, if the growth is relatively attractive, is something where we find relatively more value. Mm. Uh, you also spoke about investors wanting to know the pace of the margin recovery. Where do you stand on it? And if you could break that up in the three buckets, scale, the larger, you know, mid-cap sort of a companies and even the ERD companies. Sure. So I think on the margin side, again, this is to an extent uh, company specific, but I think this time we would have some confidence there should be some amount of margin recovery. Typically, uh, for the larger companies, uh, when there is uh, sustained weakness in demand, uh, there is a greater ability of working with the supply chain and uh, addressing some of the inefficiencies we, which may have crept, crept in during the you know post-pandemic hiring boom periods. And I think we've got some confidence that we'll probably see a 20 to 50 basis point kind of margin recovery in many of these companies, especially in fiscal 25. So there is, I think, in the short term, there is an element of margin recovery likelihood uh, to play out there. Among the smaller, faster growing companies, some of the companies, especially when they are reaching scale, let's say when they cross a billion dollars, move towards two billion dollars, there could be potential uh, potential of gaining, uh, you know, benefits in terms of operating leverage, in terms of spending their SGNA dollars better, where there is an element of margin recovery possible. So again, this is very very bottom up, uh, but among the larger companies, we definitely have confidence you'll see at least twenty to forty basis points of recovery over the next two years. Mm. What are the factors, Ankur, to consider if someone wants to invest in an IT company for a turnaround play under a new CEO? There have been, you know, some new CEO announcements over the last six months. What are the factors that one should consider or keep in mind? I think, uh, you know, uh, this is, again, very, very company specific. Uh, Companies have different approaches, companies which have got... Uh, you know, relatively more stable approaches, stable management teams over time. Our research has shown that they've been able to do a lot better. Uh, uh, when we measure stability in terms of the overall management team, let's call the top 500 to 1,000 people, it's been a relatively good barometer of seeing cross-cycle success. Now, for turnaround plays, uh, you know, it depends on getting multiple things right. Some of the things which have worked in the last four or five years, if you look at some of the smaller companies where there have been, you know, uh, turn, uh, there have been uh, changes in, in leadership, when we see leadership comes in, which is relatively well, you know, uh, in- incentivized and it's got relatively high amounts of of freedom, and uh, they are there are potential for changes in 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 the in the sort of cost structure in terms of how the, the teams are are, are planned. Uh, you know, there can be some potential for growth recovery, but again, this is very difficult to say. Uh, IT services is a very simple business, but very hard to execute. We've always said that it's easier to strategize than to execute. So again, it's very, very bottom up, very, very company specific. Mm. All right, uh, Ankur, we leave it there. Thank you very much for your time. Great speaking with you, and uh, you know, hope to speak with you once we have the results and, uh, on hand, and uh, we can ask them, uh, ask you to make sense of them. You know,